G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and if you watch my videos you would have seen over the past 12 months or so I've had several tree disasters. One tree, actually a big gum, crushed a whole part of my chicken pen and I had to fix that up and today we've come out to find some of our large, big beautiful large tree in our front yard has come down some of the branches and I haven't really inspected the damage closely yet so you and I'll do that soon but you can see behind me here next to my pecan I hope it hasn't crushed too much of the pecan that tree's about five or six years old and it fruited for the first time last year and we got about 50 pecans off it and it was wonderful and I don't want that thing half snapped that would really devastate me and then there's another one behind me here a branch that's broken and hopefully has missed some of my plum and nectarine trees that we've planted out the front because we're trying to get our front yard away from the ornamentals and uh, transfer it into more edible type trees or edible, edible ornamentals but anyway this video is about how sometimes you just got to knuckle down if you live on a treed acreage or a treed property you're going to have days like these where you're just going to have to chop and chip and it's going to be one of those days so i thought i'd take the opportunity to show you guys how i do it obviously i'm going to chop up first with my chainsaw and then i'm going to use a chipper that i hired and i want to incorporate why i think hiring a chipper is better than buying your own chipper and so i'll talk a little bit more about that later the good thing is I do have other piles of sticks and there's one that a hen likes to visit. I did a video about that, uh, just a short one a while back of a hen that likes the wood pile that I made out of the sticks and debris that I've been collecting for a time like this for when I can hire a chipper and make a big useful day out of it. So she's going to be devastated that I'm going to get rid of her wood pile. But anyway, I will clean up a few of the wood piles that I already have, I'll chip them up and I'll also go through and do some pruning of the fruit trees and make a big day of it. Rightio, let's get into it. Okay, this tree here is lovely. It's like a big fig, I think it is, a big Morton Bay fig. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not that strong in the ornamental type tree thing. I'm a, I'm a food gardener. But it's a beautiful tree and uh, even though we've got some fruit trees around the sort of edge of it, they don't seem to suffer too much from the shade of this thing because the sun comes over nicely and uh, gives them plenty. But yeah, we have made a little pathway here, a nice little bench, a love heart bench and we're trying to make this into a sort of a shade area. I've actually planted a Davidson plum here, which doesn't mind a bit of shade. It's a native plum to New South Wales and Queensland. Very sour plum, but really great for preserves and jams, and I'm keen to get some fruit off it one day. Growing nicely in part shade here. So, uh, you know, you can get, grow those type of fruit plants and even passion fruit, which we have around here as well. But let's have a look at the damage. So what's happened is, this large branch that it's dropped this one it is humongous now that is not going to go through a chipper obviously but i'll be able to chip a lot of it so follow that one that one goes straight through hits that ornamental um, actually misses my cedar bay cherry which is an edible fruit tree it's just a small one over here you can't really see and then it hits the pecan I'm hoping it doesn't do too much damage this other branch goes out here crushes those ornamentals misses the Davidson plum and out to there it doesn't look like it does too much damage either right between that plum and the nectarine there. this is the young nectarine that I've just stuck in it's been growing for about a year and a half so that those that was lucky. That was very lucky. Let's have a look at the pecan. I'm fretting about that at the moment. 
Yeah, it's, I don't think there's major branch damage, but I'm not going to see until I cut this away. run out of juice. Well that's the first major branch done. Cut up and now I'm going to cut it back to the end of that tree once I refill the chainsaw. Cut up that other branch and then I can get into some mulching. But you can see it's a it's a fairly tough job and you're going to get days like this on acreage, uh, treed acreage like this you know. And it's just part of the parcel. I mean, I can use all this wood with chip and other things, firewood and that type of thing. So it has its advantages, but uh, yeah, sometimes you have to be prepared to work. Unless you, if you're going to get someone in to do this, it costs you a packet. Like I mean, a thousand or, or more, just to get someone to chop, in a tree, chop up a tree and, and mulch it up. Ridiculous waste of money when you can hire a chipper for 200 bucks for uh, 24 hours and chainsaw up yourself. You know, five bucks worth of fuel. Anyway, I better keep going. Yeah, it looks good. It'll give these fruit trees at the front here a little bit of extra light and it just opens it up a bit too it was getting a bit overgrown well I'm going to have a quick drink and then get back into it It's the next morning. I've got a few hours left of using the chipper for my 24 hours worth, so I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm down the back, got that pile of sticks that I was talking about yesterday that I'd accumulated up over the last six months or so, and I really saved it from that last time that big tree fell over and I just couldn't mulch it all down in time. Because I only hire a mulcher like this probably twice a year. I save up all the debris and fallen trees and there's a couple of other trees around here that I'm going to quickly chop up and whack through the mulcher or the chipper uh, while I've got the chance to do so. I might not get up to the fruit trees because I'm not going to do a rush job on pruning them just for the sake of using this chipper now. I've got till lunchtime which is about three hours left so I'll get stuck into it. But before I do let's have a talk, quick talk about hiring versus buying a chipper. A chipper like this one that you can tow behind an SUV still does six inch logs so this is 150 mil six inch logs it's quite a big sized chipper it does a really good job as you've been seeing. That would cost maybe fifteen twenty thousand dollars I'd reckon um, at least 
that's a ridiculous to buy for a small acreage or even a farm because you're not going to be using it enough to warrant the outlay. So, and if you go down, say, to a 90 mil or a four inch chipper, you can buy one of them for around two and a half thousand for a good one. That's still a big price when you can hire something this size for $200 a day and only need it a couple of times a year. So you say 400, 500 max a year to mulch all you need. You know, that's, that's the go, I reckon. Rather than paying $2,500 for a chipper that you're only going to use occasionally. I have got a small garden chipper. It cost me $300. That's just for garden stuff, you know, mulching up pepper plants or small twigs or small trimmings off the orchard. Does a great job for that. Just a garden mulcher, cheap one. But I wouldn't go anything bigger than that because you've got to count the servicing costs, the repairs and the overall uh, life of the machine. I think you're still coming out on top if you're hiring one of these over 10 years, a couple of times a year. Let's quickly go through how to operate one of these machines. I'm just going to give you a Soldier's 5 on it, nothing over fancy because obviously you'll read a manual and every machine is slightly different but most of them um, operate pretty much the same. Anyone that gets hurt or badly injured or killed using a large mulcher like this is just plain stupid because there's so many safety aspects, so many safety devices on this thing that it should be almost impossible to get hurt using it as long as people just use the thing sensibly. Okay firstly the chute is quite hard to reach in. I, I'm not, I can't physically get my arm or anything in here so if I'm feeding something I'd have to basically lie on this to reach even in there to get my hand caught which is a good thing. But anyway, say if something does happen, you've got this bar here that you just bump or push as you're going and it will stop the machine. You've also got these buttons. You push them in and they'll stop the machine in reverse. You've got this big bar here that you can push to reverse it in general operation or to obviously stop yourself from getting sucked into the machine. It's also got a neutral setting that the machine has to be in before it can be started. So it's in the neutral position now. That's in the reverse, neutral and start. You've got instruction books usually come with these machines and I wouldn't worry about the PSI or any of this type of pup. This is the clutch unit. It's in neutral now or it's not engaged. And here's the this was made in the US by the way. Here's the motor, it's a start, you've got a clutch, uh, you've got a choke, um, you've got the running slow high, and pretty well the startup procedure is you just start the thing with the start, you might give it a bit of choke if it hasn't been used for a while. Once it starts, you give it a bit of grunt and leave it run for about five minutes till the machine warms up which is a good procedure for any type of heavy machinery like this and then once it's warmed up you then can engage this out of out of neutral and whack it forward and then you can move this slowly into the engaged position the clutch and then it, then it will start moving the teeth here and then you can start putting logs through. The shutdown procedure is pretty much the reverse and you just give it some time to idle down a few minutes and then just turn the machine off and it will it actually self idles down. 
this chute here, you can put it on several different angles. You can just rotate it around. It has a locking device here that you can unlock and lock. Pretty simple to do. Obviously this one runs on ULP, but you can get the larger diesel motors. It's time for me to stop talking and to get into action again. Feeling a little stiff from yesterday, lots of chopping wood and everything like that, but I hope I don't find half a dozen brown snakes underneath that pile. It is Australia and we have got eight out of the ten most deadliest snakes in the world and number two could be hiding underneath that pile. So I have to be a little bit careful uh, going through this wood pile. It's been sitting there for about six months. But anyway, that's part of living in Australia. So let's get into it. And the day's finished. It's late afternoon actually because once I finished the mulching and the chipping I had to take the mulcher back so I didn't get much time to film. I had to give it a quick dip and uh, refuel it and then drop it back into the shop. As it was I was about 15 minutes late because I got a bit greedy. I just kept on finding twigs and sticks to throw through the machine right up until the sort of last minute but uh, they gave me some grace when I got to the shop. They were pretty busy, so it uh, didn't really matter. And no one needed that chipper after me. Uh, that No one had booked it for the next day or anything. So they gave me a bit of grace and they didn't charge me extra. All in all, it's, uh, it was a good, well, 24 hours of chipping and getting rid of that major problem that was up the front there. Later on, I had a look at the pecan tree and it wasn't too bad. The damage was only one small branch. Um, I'm sure it'll grow back into shape. But thankfully there was no sort of terminal damage done. There wasn't any big branches ripped from the centre of the stem or the trunk. That would have been a problem. But uh, no, it was good. All those rest of that, rest of those big branches, they fell right between the smaller fruit trees and now I've opened that area right up and I'm, I'm really happy with it. it. Sort of forced me into cutting that big fig back and getting a bit of sunlight to that undergrowth there and it was probably the right time to get it done and in a way those fallen branches just pushed me into doing it. Down the back here where I'd stored all this extra wood and twigs and stuff that I'd collected and the little black hen made her nest out of. It was good to get rid of all that. Now it's nice and cleaned up. I left a bit of the debris at the bottom there, the leaf matter, for the chickens to go through because as I was taking all the sticks away and the logs and putting them through the mulch I came across hundreds of spiders and in particular that one chicken that uh, loved her little home, that I thought it'd be devastated. Well, you know, I paid her back by letting her get about a kilo of spiders I reckon she ate. So we turned her missing pile as it went down into a real positive for her. So at least she'll have good memories of her home getting dismantled by me and finding a whole heap of beautiful spiders to eat. Later in the afternoon, all the rest of the chickens found their way into the bottom of the mulch pile and raked all through it and cleaned it all up for me and it actually looks good. 
I've just finished by saying I've had to change my shirt today. I was pretty well shattered by uh, lunchtime because I worked pretty hard getting all those sticks through that chipper. I needed a good drink, I can tell you that. But having said that, acreage living isn't all hard work. This is an exception these days. Most of the time it's pottering around the garden for me. It's doing the odd job, evening out the workload so you're not doing everything in one day. And uh, I don't find it too physically stressful. Like I said, you get these days, but you know, a couple of times hiring a chipper a year, uh, you save it all up, have a big day and get the job done. But on you know three acres or so, or five, or even ten, I wouldn't say that it's uh, overly physical. If you like these type of videos, uh, the how hard you sort of work, or what an acreage living is like, besides just sort of gardening stuff that I do, and chickens and quail and ducks, let me know. I'm happy to do more of these sort of reality things of what you can get up to on a day-to-day -day basis in the acreage or on a small property. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.